now the world rises in honor of Derek Walcott, of Castries St. Lucia, founder of the Arts Guild Movement, the Theater Workshop of Trinidad and Tobago. Like an elder trembling for Susanna naked, he murmured to the mirror, no, my thoughts are pure. They're meant to help the people, ignorant and poor, but these, smile the bracelet, are the vowels of empire. The Nobel laureate had just paid $2 to the taxi driver on Abercrombie Street and arrived somewhat preoccupied. He was in the midst of directing his play, Dream Over Monkey Mountain, for a production in Boston. The Trinidad Theatre Workshop has spent the last 30-odd years on these boards, bringing Derek Walcott's plays to life. And it is here, in the old Fire Brigade building, now called the Derek Walcott Theatre, that Raoul Panton sat down to talk with a man who has made us all so proud. I didn't expect, you know, the sort of reaction that... It, not, I wouldn't say I didn't expect, that's not too, too true, but it was not inconsequential, but it wasn't something that I had in my head. This book will go down in the history of the Caribbean as the beginning of West Indian classical literature. This is our response to Shakespeare. That's how powerful this is. It is not often one sees the face of Raoul Pantin, arguably Trinidad's most cynical journalist, poet, light up with awe, but Walcott made it happen. I grew up under a roaring waterfall of words and language and, and, and style and theater and drama, and that waterfall was called Derek Walcott. I showered in him. I told someone I'm moving from poetry to philanthropy, just to keep the peace together, you know. <laughs> Poet, playwright, philanthropist, great name, you know. And I could say but I won't. <laughs> anyway, um, what? Four P's. Four P's, four P's right? One thing about poets, they, they curse beautifully. A different world. A shared code, an artist vision rebuffed by the narrow, conventional, and uncomprehending. Thank God there are a few people out in the world, there are not many, eh? not enough, who are withdrawn from, from the hustle and the rat race, and you know, I gotta get ahead, and I gotta get a new car, and a big house, and, and all these things that people chase and, and spend their whole lives going up and smoke after these things. Thank God there's a, poets, I suppose, are a kind of social philosopher, eh? they reflect. They, they spend 10 years looking at the society and then they write in five lines that tell you something about the society that is so true and so, so accurate and so rare that it touches you and you might change your life. It was a very votive thing. It was mainly to write something as completely as I could about St. Lucia. So, you know, it was directed. That had, that's the direction it had. Um, but I knew, I felt it was, you know, I felt there was something strong in it. I, I share a lot of his rage, you know. Things like inefficient societies, bad politics, mismanaged cultures, you know, this emphasis that we're all African and all this foolishness, or we're Indian or Chinese or Spanish, when what we really are are New World people, a very broad picture, which we see, the artist sees, the true artist, because there's some fascists here who are in this black number or Indian number business. And I'm ready for them, you know. Something is much more important than a lot of factional crap. Tomorrow morning, if I said, you know, to someone, it would be great to have an art gallery that say, yeah, but we need, you know, there's, it's an internal argument. The attitude is simply, you're right. And I'm not right because I am me talking. It's as, it's as essential, Tommy. you know, to, to anyone in this country. You as a writer, you as a playwright, you know, where do you go with your work? In this country, you don't have publishers. You see, writers have to pay to publish their own work. It's, it's obscene. And then you ask you why you get angry. It would sound like insulting Trinidad. But if I make comparisons with what I have seen and what I've experienced personally in some of the other islands. You have a large population which really is interested in carnival and party. As Walcott said once, God saved me from a society whose center begins from the waist down. You have wasted your life in this country trying to create a theater. Walcott loves his people. He loves the salt and the sweat on their faces. He loves cocoa groves, he loves hills, he loves rampanalgas, and the hawks circling over the hills. He loves clouds, seraphims of clouds. He loves us. We don't love him enough. Take it. 
but my bitterness about taking it away remains. Walcott's million dollar prize has shrunk considerably since, due to taxes and other expenses. But the Nobel laureate still wants to put money in the arts in this country. Specifically, he wants to convert that old fire brigade building on Abercrombie Street into a vibrant theater. What better homage can this country pay to this native son than to grant him this simple gift? Ira Mathur, TV6 News, with a special report.